President Trump and the Texas GOP have pledged to boost the country's already record oil and gas production with support for additional drilling. But that political backing doesn't guarantee the oil industry's enthusiasm to expand drilling, particularly when increasing that supply threatens their profits. However much oil there happens to be in the ground, oil and gas companies only want to tap a certain maximum at any time to keep the price from plummeting. Kirk Edwards is the CEO of Latigo Petroleum, based in Odessa, Texas, which, together with nearby Midland, is riding the biggest oil boom America has ever seen. The surrounding counties of West Texas and Eastern New Mexico, together called the Permian Basin, already produce more oil than ever before, and more oil than anywhere else in the country. Edwards cautioned that the kind of oversupply promised by Drill Baby Drill would actually be counterproductive. The $70 price levels I think a very good price for the consumer because it's a you go by the gas station here it's two dollars and forty cent gasoline but this price goes to sixty it goes in the fifties these drilling rigs are going to quit and uh, the employment rate's going to go up and then the production level will go straight down. The rise of high-tech forms of extraction that need ever fewer people have meant a decline in the number of rig workers even as oil and gas output has hit consistently record levels. But there's another part of the energy sector in Texas where oil workers' skills could be in high demand. Drilling for clean energy, geothermal energy, as a power source, has up till now been tied to specific geologically active locations like the volcano-scarred landscape of Iceland. Those are places where high levels of heat from deep underground can come into contact with naturally occurring underground rivers. But a new generation of geothermal is taking shape led by companies headquartered in a far less obvious place. The future of Texas energy could be right under our feet. Today, we're taking a look at geothermal energy, the promises and politics of an emerging alternative power source. Can you explain how geothermal energy works? The center of the earth is really hot. If you drill down, you can tap that heat for power and electricity using the best aspects of the renewable industry and the oil and gas industry. That power is on demand, you can drill for it. It produces round the clock without heating up the planet. And it does that while using all of the skills of this oil and gas industry. Shale oil and gas extraction in a place like the Permian relies heavily on fracking. Much of the tech and the training that's made fracking work, fiber optics, AI-driven monitoring and horizontal drilling may also have set Texas up for a geothermal revolution. New geothermal startups like Fervo and Sage and XGS are working to take the sector from niche to mainstream. Where does the industry stand as a whole and how does that compare to oil and gas? So geothermal is absolutely in its infancy. And I think the role that it potentially serves is it provides a stable bulwark to our growing and very powerful wind and solar at a substantially lower cost than the nearest competitor, which would be nuclear. Our Ryan Chandler shows us an innovative office space using geothermal power. Clean, it's abundant, essentially limitless, uh, and available everywhere. Bedrock Energy connected this complex to the core of the earth. Our vision is literally to, to expand it to all the large buildings in Texas. A geothermal power source pumps water into the ground. The steam it creates rotates a turbine that generates energy. And there's a lot of it. The International Energy Agency found the untapped energy in just the first six miles under Texas equals 163 trillion barrels of oil, a million times more than all the energy we generate in a year. It's almost like a Swiss Army knife for how we can um, usher in an era of, of energy dominance and, and abundance. If we basically, over the next four years, took all the wells that we're drilling currently for oil and gas and took that number and did that for geothermal heat, we would be able to provide all the power for the state of Texas that we're currently using. Austin Energy is launching a geothermal pilot. The owner of Exceed Geo Energy, based here in Austin, says this is exactly what the state needs. We have to do something to stabilize the grid and geothermal is, is probably the best solution. Heat from thousands of feet underground will be transferred to the device in East Texas to produce energy. Going in depth on this, families in one central Texas development turned to geothermal power to keep their homes cool. 
homes in Whisper Valley in East Travis County are outfitted with solar panels and geothermal technology for cooling. Now, Texas lawmakers just in the last couple of years have been making it easier for, their, for these geothermal energy companies to start. What's changed there? So this is one of the really important and exciting things about geothermal is that as the country gets more and more partisan, geothermal is extremely bipartisan. The legislature is looking towards expansion. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick directed senators to explore geothermal power, and it's a bipartisan effort. Like it's a really great way to kind of bridge, you know, new technology with existing and old technology of Texas, the oil and gas industry. Geothermal uses the same kind of infrastructure as oil and gas, just for cleaner purposes. So the Texas legislature in the last session even as there was a big backlash against the state's renewable energy program, they passed laws that clarified who owns the geothermal heat, landowners, and that says that if you have an orphaned oil and gas well, a geothermal energy can use it to drill a geothermal well with no additional permit. This well was drilled in 2008. In 2021, we re-entered the well and we created a 3,200 foot vertical reservoir in hot dry rock using our gravity fracturing technology called heat root, which allows you to frack downward toward the heat. What we've pioneered is the application of using horizontal drilling. And as a result, our wells are far more productive than traditional geothermal wells. The hollow spaces underground can also be used to store energy in the form of hot or cold water pumped using solar or wind power. Back in February of 2023, we came back to this well and we demonstrated energy storage for over five weeks. So during this testing, we were able to demonstrate long duration energy storage. So we pumped into the well or stored for six hours, and then we produced 200 kilowatts of power for over 18 hours. Now, if you can imagine, if you combine that with solar, you can actually turn solar into 24 seven baseload energy. Secure and clean electric generation could be what puts geothermal on the map for good, if it can get there fast enough. Data centers, for example, are voracious for power. Military bases are desperate for sources of energy that can't easily be hacked or turned off. This geothermal has to catch up with the capacity of conventional plants. Right now, the most straightforward way to meet that demand is with natural gas plants. The sheer demand for power might help, since builders of traditional power plants face significant supply chain limits. Not to mention that, once you build that plant, you have to keep it continually supplied using a fuel that fluctuates wildly in price. Geothermal energy, by contrast, costs in the end, but it costs in the beginning, or at least that's the promise. The question is, can the geothermal pioneers innovate fast enough to compete with older and more established energy sources? Which is to say, can they provide a chance to actually drill, baby, drill?